all of the components that make the first Mean Girls film so great are completely absent from Mean Girls 2. Now that's not to say Mean Girls 2 is a terrible film. But there are two ways to kind of judge this. The first is to judge it, of course, as a sequel to Mean Girls, which is what it's being marketed as. It's referred to as the sequel. It includes the plastics. As a sequel, it's inferior. And yes, sequels usually often are inferior. They're they're sequels. But this one just feels like a completely different film. It doesn't feel like an extension of the first film. The other way to judge it, of course, is a film on its own, with its own plot, its own narrative, etc., And in that respect, it's not so bad. If it had a different name and wasn't just called Mean Girls 2, then, yeah, I think there might have been something else in it that was a little bit more enjoyable, but it's impossible to watch this without constantly thinking, well, that was done much better in Mean Girls and that that was better in Mean Girls. So I will say, if you're a fan of Mean Girls this will disappoint you. If you've never seen Mean Girls, then maybe watch Mean Girls 2 first. I don't think it really spoils anything from the first film. It is a a separate narrative. So I'd actually unusually recommend watching the second one first, and then when you watch the first one, you'll realise just how good this could have been. So this was released in 2011, directed by Melanie Myron, or Myron, uh, written by Cliff Ruby and Alana Lesser, and now, we'll see the acting's good, the cast is very good. We have Megan Martin as Jill, um, who's a really interesting character. Uh, very well developed, I guess. I do like Jill, and I particularly like Abby as well. I really like Abby's personality. She's played by Jennifer Stone. The plastics don't really stand out to me. That's one of the reasons why I think there are a lot less memorable than the plastics in the mean girl in the first mean girls film they're just not as interesting in a way they're more mean but they're more boringly mean they've got a lot less going for them they're a bit more basic so that's one of the ways in which this lets itself down the narrative is kind of similar in the sense that joe has been traveling around a lot a lot she moves to this school and it's not actually her who's being targeted it's abby And we learn quite early on in the film that Jo is being paid to be Abby's friend, basically to look after her, to be her bodyguard. And that's questionable in many ways, but Jo is well aware that her actions are questionable. So I thought that was a potentially interesting concept, but there was nothing really about this narrative that I found that interesting. I find the development of the narrative was fine, but just nothing really happened. Abby as a character, I think she went on an interesting journey. Joe went on an interesting journey philosophically, I guess. The things that make this not as good, the lack of Tina Fey, the absolute absence of Tina Fey, because to me, if Tina Fey had not been involved in Mean Girls, I mean, let's face it, it's her film, if she hadn't headed up Mean Girls, it would not have been as funny, it would not have been as good. If she hadn't been in it, it wouldn't have been as good, because... She's incredible and perfect and can't really do anything wrong, in my opinion. I think the characters in Mean Girls are a lot better developed. They're a lot more interesting. They've got better motives. And I guess superficially, there's a lot more pink in Mean Girls. And that may sound like an odd thing to say, but when you think Mean Girls, you think pink. Everything is pink. And it's really great branding. And it just gives it that little bit something extra. And I really enjoy that. I think the dialogue is what makes Mean Girls the best. It's the funny. It's funny. It's very well written. Very witty. Very clever. Very Tina Fey. All of these things that make that great. Uh, the fashion's a lot better as well. The costumes are a lot better. The, all of that is absent from Mean Girls too. And I think that's one of the reasons why it just doesn't work as a sequel. Because the things that make the first film great are not involved in this film. And that's that's a shame. As a film on its own, fairly average. As a sequel, definitely below par. 